The order for daily evening prayer is found beginning on page 22 of the Book of Common Prayer. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant our most merciful Father to his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou all lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Portion of the Psalms are appointed for the evening of the fourth day. Begin with Psalm 22, found on page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer. We'll say the Psalms this evening responsibly by Holbrook. My God, my God, look upon me. Why hast thou forsaken me? And art so far from my help, and from the words of my complaint. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season also I take no rest. And thou continuest holy, O thou worship of Israel. Our fathers hoped in thee, they trusted in thee, and thou didst deliver them. They called upon thee and were open. They put their trust in thee and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, a very scorn of men, and the outcome. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips and shake their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him if he will have him. But thou art he that took me out of my mother's womb. Thou wast my hope when I came yet upon my mother's breast. I have been left unto thee ever since I was born. Thou art O oh, go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help me. Many oxen are come about me, while I hold out the restroom close me on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it were a ramping and a roaring line. I am proud of how I walk, and my bones are out of joint. My heart also is in the midst of my body, being even my healthy wax. My strength is dried up like a potter, and my tongue cleaveth to my gums, and thou bringest me into the dust of death. For many dogs are come up, and the counsel of the wicked layeth siege against me. They pierce my hands and my feet, I may tell on my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. They wear my garments upon them, they cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. Thou art my succor. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. 
Save me from the lion's mouth. Thou hast heard me also from among the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. O oh, praise the Lord, ye that fear him. Magnify him, all ye of the seed of Jacob, and fear him, all ye seed of Israel. For ye have not despised nor abhorred the love of the state of the poor. Ye have not hid his face from him, but when he called on him, he heard him. My praise is of thee in the great congregation. My vows will I perform in the sight of them that fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. They that seek after the Lord shall praise him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember themselves and be turned unto the Lord. And all the kindred of the nation shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All such as be fat upon earth have eaten and worshipped. All they that go down into the dust shall kneel before him, and no man that forget his own soul. My seed shall serve him. They shall be counted unto the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, whom the Lord hath made. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall feed me in a green pasture, and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. He shall convert my soul and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou shalt prepare a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the thirteenth verse of the ninth chapter of the second book of Moses called Exodus. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet insultest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Stand therefore now, and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home. The hail shall come down upon them, and they shall die. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servant and his cattle in the field. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since so it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field, and brake every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent, and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, 
I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Entreat the Lord, for it is enough, that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. And the flax and the barley were smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was boiled. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord. And the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. We read it the first lesson. The Magnificat, on page 26. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For he, O Romans, for all generations shall call me for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and of his his name, and his mercy is all man that fear him throughout all generations. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the Almighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty always. He remembered his mercy, and hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, will be without end of man. Here we the epistle of Paul the Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, and the Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Apia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. But we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and thou also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again. Thou therefore receive them, that is, my own vows, whom I would have retained with me, 
that in our stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be, as it were, of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, specially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on my account. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal, prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. Therefore, salute thee, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. We read it the second lesson. The Luke Divinus, on page 28. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For thine eyes shall see thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to mighty the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people, Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was succeeded by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us well in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. God, for the second Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. We call for us Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen.
O God, to whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, for the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Like thy darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A general thanksgiving on page 33. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the whom of thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time of my court, to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore.